The other concept in Jungian thought that is unique among all schools of psychology is Jung's notion of the self. And here's where sometimes I wish that psychology was more like mathematics. You know, in mathematics you have well-defined terms and you can't use a term in any way but the way it is defined. So I have this rigid part of my psyche that we can talk about later. But <laughs> psychology is not like that. So that the word self appears in many different contexts in many schools of psychology. Uh, Kohut, for example, developed a psychology that has come to be called self-psychology. The self, the, the use of the term self that Kohut employs is not the same use of the term self that Jung uh, uses. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but suffice it to say the self is the archetypal core of the ego complex. And the goal of the individuation process is to sustain the connection between the ego and the self. That connection between the ego and the self was called, not by Jung, but by Edward Edinger, the ego-self axis. And we'll see a little bit later how the transcendent function facilitates the maintenance of that. Jung also, like all psychoanalytic thinkers, deals with the unconscious, but Jung deals with it in a very specific way and a very different way from other schools of psychoanalytic thought. What other schools of psychoanalytic thought call the unconscious, Jung calls the personal unconscious. And he contrasts it with the collective unconscious. The understanding of the differences between these two and the ways they interpenetrate is critical to understanding the dynamics of the psyche from a Jungian perspective. In particular, the personal unconscious is filled with complexes. And the complexes get their structure from their connection to the collective unconscious. The core of every complex in the personal unconscious is an archetype in the collective unconscious. Now, Jung, even after the break with Freud, Jung was always credited by Freud as having discovered the complex and, brought the, and Jung brought the complex in front and center in psychoanalytic thought. And in fact, long after the split between the two, when Freud uh, referred to Jung's thought at all, he referred to it as complex psychology. That was how valuable he viewed the notion of the complex. And when you take a look at the way Jung deduced the complex and its connection to the archetypes, you really get an example of Jung's brilliance. The personal unconscious is full of material that at one time was present to the ego, this is psychoanalytic teaching now, one time was present to the ego, but like most things, when an event or experience happens to us, we can process some of it. But inevitably there's residue that we don't process in the moment. And that residue, that unprocessed material, goes into the unconscious, ostensibly for later processing, either through dreams, Act of imagination, Freud wouldn't talk about that, but it, it kind of goes in, in the unconscious. This is when the unconscious was just the unconscious. Well, Jung took a look at the, the phenomena of the unconscious, and he found that rather than just being this like trash heap of undealt with material, there was some organization to the unconscious. If the unconscious really is just, okay, event, I process some of it, some of it goes there. Event, I process some of it, some of it goes there. Then the unconscious ought to look like the trunk of my car, <laughs> right? But it doesn't. It's organized. There's integrity. There's these nodes of activity in the, uh, in the unconscious. And Jung called these nodes of activity complexes. And he said, okay, how in the world do those complexes form? Because life does not unfold, unfold for us in discrete pockets of events. We actually construct events. And there's an idiosyncrasy 
to our lives, right? No two people have the exact same experiences, even if they're identical twins raised together. And certainly, if, you know, as adults, we can understand that life just kind of happens to us and we just, it's kind of like that uh, I Love Lucy show with the chocolate factory, you know? <laughs> Where we're just trying to put the chocolate in the wrapper before we get inundated. Just think what it's like for an infant. And yet, in spite of the messiness of life, the unconscious is amazingly organized. So Jung wondered, where does this organization come from? And that was one of the ways he began to discern the need for more than one layer in the unconscious. That we have this, this unconscious filled with the residue from our day-to-day -day experience. He called that the personal unconscious. <laughs> But the organizational structure of the personal unconscious was built upon a level of the unconscious that was never part of our experience, but in fact is present in the human being by virtue of our being. And that he called the collective unconscious. And the contents of the collective unconscious are basic organizing principles that he later, or at some point in his career, called the archetypes. And so it's going to be the relationship between those two layers of the unconscious and the way that those two layers of the unconscious, maybe I can use a pointer, relate to the ego complex that facilitate individuation. And the transcendent function is intimately connected there.